Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Jersey Nick Moto. I got a little bonus video for you guys this week. I was tagged to do a challenge, and I, I usually try and stay away from these challenges, but I was tagged by Jason, JP1970, who I got to meet and ride with last year out in Elko, Nevada. And before he did it, he texted me and he said, Hey, Nick, you know, I found this challenge. I think it's pretty interesting. It's a little different than the other ones out there. And if I tagged you in it, would you do it? And so I said, sure, I would do it. I said, absolutely. Make your video, tag me in it, and then I'll make mine. So I was tagged by Jason, JP1970. His information will be linked below his YouTube channel. If you're not watching him yet, you should. And the challenge was the five things that changed your life. All right, so five things that changed my life. Let's see what we got. All right, number one, one thing that changed my life was leaving the white collar world behind. Now, some of this stuff I talked about in other videos, but I'll just go over it briefly. Um, when I graduated high school, I really didn't know what to do with my life. I, looking back now, I would have, I should have went to trade school or something like that, but. At the time, I was a pretty decent student in high school, so all my guidance counselors were pushing me towards college, and I actually got a couple small scholarships, and between that and financial aid, going to college was ended up being very cheap for me. And I didn't know what to do, so I went to college. And I got through the four years, partied more than I learned, and I graduated college with a business finance degree, I got my first office job in a mortgage company selling mortgages. I sucked at it. It wasn't for me. It was all on commission. I never made any money. I'm just not a bullshitter. Then uh, after that, I had another office job in a Ford dealership in their business development department. I lasted there three weeks and I walked out. And then I got a job in the finance department of a, a company called Cisco Foods. And, you know, everybody said, well, you know, that, that's great, man. You got like, you're in the finance department. That's what your degree is in. You'll, you'll be fine. You'll like this one. I lasted there four days and I walked out. And it was a stretch that I lasted four days. I just hated it. I then realized that I had made a terrible mistake and wasted money going to college. I, like I said, luckily it wasn't much money because I did have that scholarship and financial aid and I didn't go to a very prestigious college. I went to New Jersey City University, which we used to call back then the bargain on the boulevard. But still, it's just the white collar world, working in an office, sitting in a cubicle, it was killing me. It was not for me. So when I had quit that job, I went, I actually, I, you know, was hard up for a job. My neighbor was the uh, caretaker of a cemetery in Jersey City. So I actually went there and cut grass in a cemetery and I was there like almost 11 months. And it didn't pay much, but I was happy. And people thought I was nuts. They were saying, oh, you got a degree, you're cutting grass in a cemetery. But the main thing was I was happy. And I knew I wasn't gonna stay there. After that, I got a job at a chemical plant. I liked that job a lot, it paid really good, worked a lot of hours, but that closed down. And which led me to the job I hold today that I've been at for 13 years. For 13 years, I've been a Teamster. I load trucks, unload rail cars. I switch, I move trailers around. I hang on the side of the train and back in the building sometimes. A bunch of things I'm qualified for and I love it. I mean, I wish I could sometimes take that job and move it out of New Jersey to a nice, cheaper, warmer state down south. But as far as the type of work, the blue collar industry, I'm very, very happy with my work now. So much more happy than I was years ago. I was never cut out for an office. I tried to do it. but So that was a big event that changed my life, leaving the white collar world for good and starting to work in the blue collar environment, which I still do today. Like I said, I've been at this job 13 years and I can never see myself sitting behind a desk. Number two, it's probably kind of obvious, getting my motorcycle license. I got my motorcycle license, it's about I don't know, 13, 14 years ago now. I was uh, in my late 20s, wish I would have did it a little earlier, but you know, I had, you know, the, you'll, you're younger, you listen to some of the negative naysayers. I mean, like, I, a lot of my family members, you know, it's dangerous, they always talk me out of it and whatnot. Uh, Ex-girlfriends, oh God, it's dangerous, blah, blah, blah. But since I was a little kid, I was always 
fascinated by motorcycles. And I, growing up in Bayonne, New Jersey, two houses up from me was this what most people on the block called the motorcycle house. And it was this dude that he owned a little bike shop in Jersey City and he always had all these old Harleys. And all his friends used to come over and they all had Harleys. And I remember as a five-year-old kid, every time that motorcycle started up, I would run to the window and just listen to it idle, watch him pull away down the block. Then I, I knew his route. He'd make a left at the corner. And then I had just enough time to run to the back of the house to my aunt's bedroom because her bedroom window looked through the alley. And I could see him go up, the, up 52nd Street. And... I was always fascinated with motorcycles, not just motorcycles, Harley Davidsons, because that's what I grew up around. You know, that's what was two doors up. That was, and this was back, this was in the 80s. So it, it was like, those guys were the real deal. It, it's not like today where people, they, they plunk down a bunch of money on bikes that they don't ride. They buy them to put pictures on Facebook and stuff. It, it, but these guys were the real deal. I mean, you just, I was fascinated by that life. So... From that day on, I knew I would get my motorcycle license eventually, and I did it when I was in my late 20s. And talk about changing my life for the better, talk about getting rid of stress, and that was just the beginning. So, and I knew from day one, I knew it was going to be a Harley. I remember at the MSF course, when I went to get my license, the instructors were, they, you know, they tried to talk everybody out. They said, oh, don't get a Harley for your first bike. They're very unforgiving they're they're too heavy blah 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 man two weeks later i went and bought my sportster and i couldn't be happier like i said i'm not a harley snob you ride what you want i i don't everybody rides what makes them happy but for me that's the life i knew and it will always be a harley for me so that was the second big event that changed my life getting my motorcycle license now number three <clears throat> now this one i think i also touched on this before this is going to be kind of hard to put into words and what to call it but i'm going to say number three is when i said ftw and i'm not talking about the forever two wheels ftw i'm talking about the the other ftw the fuck the world ftw and i and i don't and let me explain what i mean by that uh i knew early on i never wanted to have kids and when i knew i didn't want kids i really didn't see much i had no interest in getting married and over the years, you know, and I'm sure this is worse for women than it is for men, but I used to get a lot of negativity because towards me because I, I wasn't going like the plan route that society says you should take. Like, you know, society says, oh, you got to get married. You got to find a nice girl. You got to have kids. You got to have a family. You got to have the house with the picket fence and all this and that. And that never appealed to me. And, you know, as I grew older, it just, I felt much more strongly about that and you know like you reach that time in life like usually when you're late 20s early 30s all your friends are getting married and stuff and starting their lives and I had no interest in that and and a lot of people gave me shit about that and they were like well, well what's wrong with you why don't you want to settle down and you know I I just had no interest in it I like my freedom I like to do what I want to do i mean i've been in plenty of relationships and i know like they say relationships are a compromise and stuff and you know some of them were good some of them were not so good some of them i started to compromise and then all of a sudden my compromising was like this and hers was like this and it came to the point where oh you know stuff like give up the bike um don't ride as much. There's, you know, they have that myth. That everybody talks about, oh, ride a Harley, you'll get girls. Yeah, you'll get girls, but once you get them, they don't want you to ride. So you get them, but I have a hard time keeping them. So, you know, I just, I kind of finally said, like, you know, F you to society. I'm going to live my life the way I want. I don't care what you think, what you think, if you think. You know, the, the best one is people come to me and they say, Hey, Nick, you know, you're going to die old and alone because you don't have kids. You're not going to have anybody to take care of you when you're old and sick. And my answer to them is, hey, man, when I'm old and sick, I'm going to be in the same nursing home that your kids are going to put you in. So don't worry. We'll all be together. We'll be fine. So uh, like I said, women have come and go over the years, and I'm sure they will continue to do that. And maybe one day I'll meet the one that, you know, does the equal compromise and is cool with the bike and my traveling and stuff. And maybe I won't, and I'll be happy either way. I'll probably be happier if I won't, but hey, you never know. 
number four event that changed my life, and this one is kind of negative and positive, becoming a homeowner. Uh, about, geez, it's about six or seven years ago now, I bought my house. And it was actually quite an adjustment because I, I grew up in Bayonne, New Jersey, which is kind of like a little city, and then I moved down to Woodbridge Township to the suburbs. And first it was an adjustment with just like how quiet it was and stuff, but I, I got over that and believe me, I'm, now I'm ready to sell this house and go live out in a friggin' woods somewhere where there's nobody around. But besides the adjustment, like buying a house is a blessing and a curse. I, I'll tell you one thing, especially when you buy an older house, you become a handyman real quick. You learn how to fix things on the cheap. It's different, you can't call, you know, you rent, if the hot water heater's leaking, you call the landlord. I can't do that anymore. You know, you got to either fix it yourself or pay somebody to fix it. So it's, you know, it comes with a lot of responsibility, but it's also, you know, it's a good investment. If I ever do want to leave here, I could probably sell it. Well, let me rephrase that. When I leave here, I'm not staying here forever. When I sell it, I know I can make a profit on it. And, and it's nice to own your own home and be able to do what you want. And, you know, you don't have to worry about living in an apartment with the guy next door making noise or whatever. It, it, it's a good thing, but it's a, it, it's not the easiest thing in the world, but I'm proud that I got to, you know, buy my own house and I'm a homeowner now. So that, that was a big event in my life. So we got one more and this one's probably obvious too. A very big thing that changed my life was when I started to travel on my motorcycle. Now, first trip was around 2013, New Jersey to down to Virginia for Skyline Drive and with my buddy Bobby that I take all my big trips with. And, and man, that, that changed my life. I knew that I would always travel after that. But the one that really got me was a couple years ago, I think it was 2016 when we rode to California a true coast to coast trip, Atlantic Ocean to Pacific Ocean. That trip was when I knew that I was completely hooked that I'll do this every year that I can as long as I could throw my leg over a motorcycle. When we were um we were a couple days out, well, I guess we were about 5 days out and we were finally we were crossing the desert in Arizona and man, it it, it was it was brutal. It went up to about 115 degrees at times. I mean, we were doing fine. The bikes didn't like it at all. I mean, they would, they would knock and sputter. And like there, there are times where we're in the middle of nowhere and we're wondering, Jesus Christ, are these things going to break down? Are we even going to actually make it the whole way? But then as we left Arizona and, and you know, at some point there, you, you're going through the desert. Then all of a sudden, when you're near California, get into California, you're going through the mountains. And you're going through the canyons and we got we left that desert into those mountains and all of a sudden it, it dropped down to like 80 degrees and just the feeling i got now i know a lot of you guys probably follow scooter tramp scotty scotty correcus and he tells a story where that he's been on the road you know 25 years living off his bike he tells a story about when he left california and he went into the desert and how he it was kind of like a religious experience where he knew he was destined to travel well i had that same experience but i was going east to west he was going west to east but there's something something that happens when you cross that desert and get into california and i was like man i am going to do this the rest of my life not saying to live on my bike but every year as long as I can, as long as I get my leg over a motorcycle, I'm going to travel around this country. And that's how I'm going to spend my vacations. And motorcycles and motorcycle traveling are probably the biggest events that changed my life. It helped me with anxiety. It helped me with relieving all kinds of stress. It helped me to get away from everyday life. It's, that is probably, those two are probably the biggest events that changed my life leaving the white collar world behind and working blue collar jobs, motorcycle license, FTW, fuck what society thinks, I'm living my life, becoming a homeowner, and the one that means the most to me, motorcycle travel. So that's it, that's my challenge. Uh, I'm not gonna tag anybody in it. You watch this, you wanna do it, you do it. You don't wanna do it, you don't. I want to thank Jason for reaching out to me to do this one because it was kind of fun. It did, you know, it got me thinking, got me thinking about life over the years, big things that happened. Oh, actually, tomorrow, 
because it's Saturday night, right? Tomorrow, I'm going to be at the AP Moto Jam up in Monticello, New York. I'm going to take some video so you guys can see that event for my first time going. If you happen to be up there, you see me walking around, say what's up. I'll have a bunch of stickers on me. Uh, thanks again for watching Jersey Nick Moto. If you have not yet, please hit that subscribe button. We are inch it up to 500 subscribers doesn't cost you a thing helps me out a lot so hit that subscribe button leave me a like leave me a comment i'll see all you guys in the next video keep your head on a swivel out there later